we begin part two of the indictment at the top of page 24. Act 19. On or between the 1st day of December, 2020, and the 31st day of December, 2020, Donald John Trump and Mark Randall Meadows met with John McEntee and requested that McEntee prepare a memorandum outlining a strategy for disrupting and delaying the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia and the other states. The strategy included having Vice President Michael R. Mike Pence count only half of the electoral votes from certain states and then return the remaining electoral votes to state legislatures. The request was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 20 On or about the first day of December 2020, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis met with Speaker of the Arizona House of Representatives Rusty Bowers, President of the Arizona Senate Karen Fan, and other Arizona legislators in Phoenix, Arizona. Unindicted co-conspirator Individual 5, whose identity is known to the grand jury, was also present. During the meeting, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Arizona and solicited, requested, and importuned the legislators present to call a special session of the Arizona State Legislature. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 21 On or about the second day of December 2020, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis appeared, spoke, and presented witnesses at a meeting of the Michigan House of Representatives Oversight Committee. During the meeting, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Michigan and solicited, requested, and importuned the Michigan legislators present at the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Michigan. During the meeting, Jenna Lynn Ellis solicited, requested, and importuned the Michigan legislators present at the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Michigan. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 22 on or about the third day of December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump. Georgia hearings now on at OANN. Amazing. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 23. On or about the third day of December 2020, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Jenna Lynn Ellis, and Ray Stallings Smith III committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer in violation of OCGA sections 1647 and 16101 in Fulton County, Georgia, by unlawfully soliciting, requesting, and importuning certain public officers then serving as elected members of the Georgia Senate and present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting, including unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury, Senators Lee Anderson, Brandon Beach, Matt Brass, Greg Dolezal, Steve Gooch, Tyler Harper, Bill Heath, Jen Jordan, John F. Kennedy, William Ligon, Elena Parent, Michael Rett, Cardin Summers, and Blake Tillery to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of violation of oath by public officer, OCGA Section 1610 1, 
by unlawfully appointing presidential electors from Georgia in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said persons as prescribed by law with intent that said persons engage in said conduct. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 24 On or about the third day of December 2020, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of OCGA, Section 161020, in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia Senate present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting. 1. That at least 96,600 mail-in ballots were counted in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia, despite there being no record of those ballots having been returned to a county elections office. 2. That Dominion Voting Systems equipment used in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Antrim County, Michigan, mistakenly recorded 6,000 votes for Joseph R. Biden when the votes were actually cast for Donald John Trump. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, departments and agencies of state government, and county and city law enforcement agencies. This was an act of racketeering activity under the OCGA, Section 16-14-3-5A-22, and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 25 on or about the third day of December 2020, Ray Stallings Smith III committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of OCGA Section 161020 in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia Senate present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting. 1. That 2,506 felons voted illegally in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. 2. That 66,248 underage people illegally registered to vote before their 17th birthday prior to the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. 3. That at least 2,423 people voted in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia who are not listed as registered to vote. 4. That 1,043 people voted in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia who had illegally registered to vote using a post office box. 5. That 10,315 or more dead people voted in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. 6 that Fulton County election workers at State Farm Arena ordered poll watchers and members of the media to leave the tabulation area on the night of November 3, 2020, and continue to operate after ordering everyone to leave. Said statement again within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, departments and agencies of state government, and county and city law enforcement agencies. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA Section 16-14-3-5-A-22 and an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 26 On or about the third day of December 2020, Donald John Trump 
caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump. Wow, blockbuster testimony taking place right now in Georgia. Ballot stuffing by Dems when Republicans were forced to leave the large counting room. Plenty more coming, but this alone leads to an easy win of the state. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 27. On or about the third day of December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump. People in Georgia got caught cold bringing in massive numbers of ballots and putting them in quote unquote voting machines. Great job at Brian Kemp, GA. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 28. On or about the third day of December 2020, Donald John Trump met with Speaker of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives Brian Cutler in the Oval Office at the White House and discussed holding a special session of the Pennsylvania General Assembly. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 29. On or between the third day of December 2020 and the 26th day of December 2020, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani placed a telephone call to President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate, Cecil Terrell Butch Miller, for the purpose of making false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 30 on or between the 3rd day of December 2020 and the 26th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate, Butch Miller. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 31. On or about the 5th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to Georgia Governor Brian Kemp and solicited, requested, and importuned Kemp to call a special session of the Georgia General Assembly. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 32. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump. Gee, what a surprise. Has anyone informed the so-called says he has no power to do anything governor at Brian Kemp GA and his puppet lieutenant governor at Jeff Duncan GA that they could easily solve this mess and win? Signature verification and call a special session. So easy. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 33. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, Sidney Catherine Powell entered into a written engagement agreement with Sullivan Strickler LLC, a forensic data firm located in Fulton County, Georgia, for the performance of computer forensic collections and analytics on Dominion Voting Systems equipment in Michigan and elsewhere. The unlawful breach of election equipment in Coffee County, Georgia, was subsequently performed under this agreement. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 34. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, Robert David Cheeley sent an email to John Charles Eastman, unindicted co-conspirator and individual eight, whose identity is known to the grand jury, and Georgia Senator Brandon Beach that stated, I am working on setting up a call for you with the Speaker and the President pro tempore tomorrow. I am also making the leadership aware of the importance for Trump electors to meet on December 14th please provide the citation to the requirements of the duties which they must comply with. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 35 
On or about the sixth day of December 2020, John Charles Eastman sent an email to Robert David Sheely, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury, and Georgia Senator Brandon Beach that stated that the Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia needed to meet on December 14, 2020, sign six sets of certificates of vote, and mail them to the President of the Senate and to other officials. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 36. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, Robert David Cheeley sent an email to unindicted co-conspirator Individual 2, whose identity is known to the grand jury, that stated he had been speaking with John Charles Eastman and was attempting to set up a call with Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives, David Ralston, and President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate, Butch Miller, to encourage them to call a special session of the Georgia General Assembly. Act 37 On or about the 7th day of December, 2020, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 2, whose identity is known to the grand jury, sent an email to Robert David Cheeley and David James Schaefer that stated, Bob, can you get on a call with David Schaefer, state GOP chair, and I later this morning to discuss? David has been on top of a lot of efforts in the state. I get off of a board call around 10.30. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 38. On or about the 7th day of December 2020, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Rudy Giuliani a retweet of unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury, that stated, Georgia Patriot Call to Action. Today is the day we need you to call your state, Senate, and House reps and ask them to sign the petition for a special session. We must have free and fair elections in Georgia, and this is our only path to ensuring every legal vote is counted. At Real Donald Trump. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 39. On or about the 7th day of December 2020, John Charles Eastman sent an email to Rudolph William Louis Giuliani with an attached memorandum titled The Real Deadline for Setting a State's Electoral Votes. The body of the email stated, Here's the memo we discussed. The memorandum was written by Kenneth John Cheesebro to James R. Troupis, an attorney associated with the Trump campaign, and advocates for the position that Trump presidential elector nominees in Wisconsin should meet and cast electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Wisconsin. This email was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 40 on or about the 7th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump requested that Bill White, an individual associated with the Trump campaign then residing in Fulton County, Georgia, provide him with certain information, including contact information for Majority Leader of the Georgia Senate, Mike Dugan, and President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate, Butch Miller. The following day, White sent an email containing the requested information to Rudolph William Louis Giuliani, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 5, whose identity is known to the grand jury, and others. This request was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 41 On or about the 7th day of December 2020, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives, David Ralston, 
and discussed holding a special session of the Georgia General Assembly. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 42 On or about the 7th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer in violation of OCGA sections 1647 and 1610 in Fulton County, Georgia, by unlawfully soliciting, requesting, and importuning Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives David Ralston, a public officer, to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of violation of oath by public officer, OCGA, Section 1610 by calling a special session of the Georgia General Assembly for the purpose of unlawfully appointing presidential electors from Georgia in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said person as prescribed by law with intent that said person engage in said conduct. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 43 On or about the 8th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to Georgia Attorney General Chris Carr for the purpose of making false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia and elsewhere. During the telephone call, Donald John Trump asked Carr not to discourage other state attorneys general from joining a federal lawsuit filed by the state of Texas contesting the administration of the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 44 On or about the 8th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump and John Charles Eastman placed a telephone call to Republican National Committee Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel to request her assistance gathering certain individuals to meet and cast electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020 in certain states, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020 presidential election in those states. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 45. On or about the 8th day of December 2020, Michael A. Roman sent a text message to unindicted co-conspirator Individual 4, whose identity is known to the grand jury, stated that he had spoken to Misty Hampton, and asked unindicted co-conspirator Individual 4 to get Misty Hampton to attend the hearing before the Georgia House of Representatives Governmental Affairs Committee on December 10, 2020. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 46 On or about the 9th day of December, 2020, Kenneth John Cheesebro wrote a memorandum titled Statutory Requirements for December 14th Electoral Votes to James R. Troupis, an attorney associated with the Trump campaign. The memorandum provides detailed, state-specific instructions for how Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin would meet and cast electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020 presidential election in those states. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 47. On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Cheesebro sent an email to Georgia Republican Party Chairman David James Schaefer, and unindicted co-conspirator Individual 9, whose identity is known to the grand jury. Kenneth John Cheesebro stated in the email that certain individuals associated with the Trump campaign asked him to help coordinate with the other five contested states. 
to help with logistics of the electors in other states hopefully joining in casting their votes on Monday. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 48 On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Cheesebro sent an email with attached documents to David James Schaefer and unindicted co-conspirators Individual 9, Individual 10, and Individual 11, whose identities are known to the grand jury. The documents were to be used by Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 49 On or about the 10th day of December, 2020, Kenneth John Cheesebro sent an email with attached documents to Arizona Republican Party Executive Director Greg Staffston and others. The documents were to be used by Trump presidential elector nominees in Arizona for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Arizona. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 50 on or about the 10th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Cheesebro sent an email to Republican Party of Wisconsin Chairman Brian Schimming with proposed language for documents to be used by Trump presidential elector nominees in Wisconsin for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Wisconsin. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 51 On or about the 10th day of December, 2020, Kenneth John Cheesebro sent an email to Nevada Republican Party Vice Chairman Jim DeGaffenreid. Kenneth John Cheesebro stated in the email that Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani and other individuals associated with the Trump campaign asked him to reach out to you and the other Nevada electors to run point on the plan to have all Trump-Pence electors in all six contested states meet and transmit their votes to Congress on Monday, December 14th. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 52 On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Cheesebro sent an email with attached documents to Jim DeGaffenreid. The documents were to be used by Trump presidential elector nominees in Nevada for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Nevada. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 52. On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Kenneth John Cheesebro sent an email with attached documents to Republican Party of Pennsylvania General Counsel Thomas W. King III. The documents were to be used by Trump presidential elector nominees in Pennsylvania for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Pennsylvania. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 54 On or between the 10th day of December 2020 and the 14th day of December 2020, David James Schaefer contacted unindicted co-conspirator Individual 2, whose identity is known to the grand jury, 
by telephone and discussed unindicted co-conspirator Individual 2's attendance at the December 14, 2020 meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 55 On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani and Ray Stallings Smith III committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer in violation of OCGA sections 1647 and 1610 in Fulton County, Georgia, by unlawfully soliciting, requesting, and importuning certain public officers then serving as elected members of the Georgia House of Representatives and present at a House Governmental Affairs Committee meeting, including Representatives Shaw Blackman, John Burns, Barry Fleming, Todd Jones, B. Nguyen, Mary Margaret Oliver, Alan Powell, Renita Shannon, Robert Trammell, Scott Turner, and Bruce Williamson to engage in conduct consisting constituting the fe- constituting the felony offense of violation of oath by public officer OCGA section 1610 by unlawfully appointing presidential electors from Georgia in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said persons as prescribed by law with intent that said persons engage in said conduct. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. We've come to the end of part two of this 98-page indictment. In part three, we will pick up right where we left off, beginning with page 34. Until then, thanks for listening.